So this will be another a separate video. Separate video. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I tend to do them short. Can I hold a sword for this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi there, guys. My name is Zach, and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster, and I'm here with Matt Easton. Hiya. Who, amongst other things, um, uh, what am I? A he hemaist, a uh, fencing instructor, antique sword dealer, and sometimes reenactor. All sorts of things. Yeah, so, but not uh, a jouster. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a bit of a chat today about a document that um, I was shown recently. It's similar to the how a knight shall be armed, how a man shall be armed, but it's talking about in the field. We've done another video on it, which you can check out on the channel, uh, and we're going to play another game. Okay. Okay. I'm up for that. So there are some weapons that are suggested. Uh huh. Which one do you think? is missing which one would you expect to be there but isn't um so of uh, the knightly weapons for the field yeah so uh we should say in this video as well this is from 1480 it's english okay, okay. uh 1480 to 1510 so there, okay it says what you should have if you're a knight going into the field into battle okay so the the knightly the standard knightly weapons at this time are the lance, mm -hmm. which could be divided into different sorts. There's the heavy yeah. lance, the, la the light lance, lance gay, as it's sometimes known, um, the spear on foot, the pole axe on the foot. Usually, if they're mentioned, two swords. There's the long sword and the short sword, so that would be the arming sword and yeah. the longer hilted sword. Uh, the rondel dagger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... Yeah, I think that's it. That's the main nightly weapon. Okay. Occasionally, yeah. I guess, you know, we think about maces or warhammers or, yeah. you know, things like that, but they're actually not mentioned very much. So. No. So what are you going to go with? What do you think? Which one do I think is not mentioned? Yeah. Well, I don't think the spear on foot would be mentioned because I think that would just be mentioned as lance. Yeah. Um, so it, don't, it says that there's a spear. You ah, should have a spear. So it says spear yeah. or lance, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing, therefore, if it mentions that, then it won't mention the pole axe. Correct, yeah. <laughs> I, it so was this so is a mounted knight, so he can't carry a pole axe. No, it mentions a halberd. Oh, really? Oh, okay. And, it, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. interesting thing is that it says, that as a knight, you should have a spear, an axe, a halberd, and a sword. Right, okay. So if, I, if it didn't mention the axe... Point. Then I would I would think oh the halberd must be meaning the the polax well but <laughs> uh, but it also mentions an axe as well so what are your thoughts on that so it mentions an axe an axe separately to a halberd different item really yeah I've got my own theory but I want to hear yours so in that case the axe is presumably a horseman's axe yeah and the halberd so. they're just talking about the polax yeah yeah. Yeah. So this is the problem. This is one of the problems when we try and marry the modern world terminology for things with actual medieval sources. Yeah. And often we find uh, we find this in things like the um, Bridport muster roll. They sometimes describe weapons interchangeably or in the same sentence. And sometimes yeah. it's clear they're talking about the same thing. Yeah. So sometimes they use the word built or glaive or halberd or poleaxe. Yeah. And it's clearly that they've just decided, well, this time I'm going to write Halber, but they're actually yeah. talking about the same weapon. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's kind of, I think it's probably because it's gone from common parlance to technical speak, right? Yeah. In technical speak, you know what is what. Yeah. Whereas when something is every day, you just use whatever word. So I might pick up my coat and then throw my jacket yeah. on the back of the, you know, on the parcel shelf in the car. It's the same thing, and most people would think of it as the same thing. Well, it's, uh, you know, to use the coat or jacket, exactly. It's, it's, it can be exactly the same object, but you're using a different word. Why? Well, we don't know why. We, why. Yeah. I, one second I might call it my coat, and the next minute I talk about my jacket, I don't know. But what's interesting while you were saying that, I was just thinking, have I ever seen the word halberd in a medieval English text before the end of the 1400s? I don't think I have. Mm. So, it, whereas the word polax goes all the way back to the 14th century. So, I yeah. suspect that halberd, being an imported word, was becoming fashionable yeah. around this time. 
Yeah. Uh, like the word, you know, coat, coat is an old English word and jacket is a French word. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, uh, so it's possible that, um, in fact, while we think of a halberd and a polax as separate objects, to them they were basically synonymous. Yeah. And that for some design reason, someone might call that one, you know, yeah. with a certain style of axe head, they might call maybe a rounded blade, they might call that one a halberd and a straight yeah. blade, they might call it a polax. I don't yeah. know. You know. And we tend to, there's a lot of assumptions that go with those words nowadays, mm. isn't there? So yeah. we tend to think of a polax as high status. Yeah, um, and a halberd is low status. But there are some and usually very, longer. Yeah, yeah. There are some very high status halberds in museums. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, there's there's halberds of the Swiss Guards of you yeah. know the Pope and this kind of stuff that are carved in etching yeah. and gilding and everything else. Um, moreover, I think that most people in the modern world differentiate them by construction method. Yeah. So the pole axe is made is is made out of various modular parts put together in a certain way. Yeah. Now interestingly, I was researching lucerne hammers and in my mind lucerne hammers and pole axes have been almost the same thing. Yeah. But I found out that lucerne hammers are constructed in a way differently to pole axes. Yeah. And even if they look the same, the construction method, some people will say, no, that's not a polax, that's a yeah. loosened hammer because yeah. of the way that the head is fitted on the yeah. on the shaft. And similarly, people with halberds, usually halberds are forge-welded one-piece one constructions that go on to the yeah. end of the shaft, whereas this is made of various bits that bolt together. Yeah. And people will say, this is a polax, that one's a halberd. Yeah. But we have absolutely no idea whether a no. 15th century English person would have defined them in that way at all. Probably not. And for for different uses you might find different things so mm. for example um the construction methods might to a guildsman matter yeah and it might differentiate in that way but whoever's writing this document and saying this is what i want you to turn up with yeah it's like i want you to have a big long thing that's got an axe on it and a spike yeah i don't care how it's made <laughs> and we have we have an exact same parallel to that with weapons like this yeah and a lot of people have um sort of argued on the internet about what is a langmesser and what is a falchion yeah. well hold on a second here falchion is a french word langmesser is a german word yeah they're just different languages yeah. and the fact is that um in england we didn't use the word langmesser but we did use the word falchion and we also used the word hanger yeah so what would that be called to a 15th century english person at this time they would have called it a hanger or a falchion or a sword. Yeah, or a sword. And, or a short sword, yeah. yeah. And even if this was constructed like a German Langmesser with yeah. slab grips and everything else, they still would have called it a falchion or a yeah. hanger because they didn't use the word Langmesser. Can I just... Yeah. Let's also, as we're here, this... Yeah. What is it? <laughs> ...is more similar from a, um, a style of action point of view mm. to that. Yes. It's single-edged. Than it with is an asymmetrical to, yeah. to another longsword. So functionally, this is a falchion. Yeah. But it looks like a sword or an arming sword, you know. Yeah. So anyway, so no, it's fascinating. And it also directly connects to the muster rolls we have from the late yeah. Wars of the Roses period, where they you see the word halberd written. And the question is, do they actually mean what we mean by a halberd? Or yeah. do they just mean a certain type of bill, or do they see mean a polax? I think most of the time they mean a polax. Yeah. Um, or an early halberd, in fairness, and yeah. sometimes what we would call a halberd, they would have called a polax. I, it probably means nothing more than just a long stick with an axe and a pokey bit on it. Yeah. So I guess the question is, in this particular source, if they say halberd and they say axe, mm. if we assume by halberd they mean one of these, yeah. what do they mean by axe? So I think they probably mean a horseman's axe. Possibly. Because... Mm. By the time you get to 1480s, we're looking at Englishmen being more ready to fight on mm. horseback than earlier on in the 15th century. Mm. And um, if they, the halberd, you definitely, you can't construe a halberd that will be useful to fight on horseback. Whereas the word You see axe, shortened ones occasionally, but yeah. then that could be what we're talking about. So sometimes you literally see one of these with the shaft chopped off here. Yeah. Used as a one-handed axe. So. Yeah. So I think the axe is a horseman's axe, and the the halberd is mm. something like this. Could be in shape. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Matt. Thanks for thank you. I'll be interested to game. see the comments below and what your thoughts are, and if you yeah. if your viewers have got any more data points to add to this. Yeah, and I'll add the link to the um, 
the link to the document in the description awesome. down below. I'll send it to you yeah, so I you can have yet, a so. look at the, <laughs> the details. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully see you guys in a future video. Thank right. you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cash and I would really like to thank you for watching this far into the video. Either you really liked it and you stayed this long, you really disagreed with most of the stuff in it and now you're very angry and typing a comment. Or maybe you've just left a playlist playing and it's cropped up. Uh, if it's the first one, please do feel free to leave a like and or share. And if you haven't already, then subscribe. Thank you very much to my patrons for all of the support. And uh, uh, you can find a link to that and to my merch shop in the description down below. Thank you very much. Cash doesn't actually mind either way. I don't think she knows too much about YouTube. Here you go.